There's only one rainforest in the lower 48, and that's here on the Olympic Peninsula. We have big rains, big trees, big animals, and we also have some of the biggest fish that you can find in the Pacific Northwest. Olympic Peninsula steelhead is like un unlike anything that you can imagine. Steelheading anywhere is great, but there's something about these glacier-fed, big forest river fish that is unmatched in terms of their size, in terms of their spirit, and the location really gives away the robustness of the animals and the fish and the spirit of this place. With over 500 generations of Quinault folks and my family's bloodline, folks here know a little something about fish and wildlife and how to have a relationship with a resource. And hopefully, if you get to come and experience such a place, you get to catch a little bit of that Olympic Peninsula spirit and take it with you wherever you go because it truly is something magnificent. So in perfect addicted form, I uh, found out about this trip last minute, kind of even like our, our whole crew here, even the camera guy behind the camera here. But in perfect form, I mean, I feel like a lot of times every good fishing trip comes together like that. It's last minute, it's conditional, it's, it's you just have to, to go, you pack the stuff, get in the truck and, and head up to the river. And the way the day unfolded, really, I don't think it could have went any better. Good to see you. Me too. I got good news. What's the good news? Fishy. There. Yeah. I, I thought it was going to be way lower, but we'll over the pier. Knowing that it was coming out with Marlon and Jordan today, of course I wanted to show them a great time and catch a lot of fish, and I wanted them to see like all of the majesty that you can really come to experience out here. Um, and there was a piece of me that was a little nervous about it, but the reason why wasn't necessarily because I was worried about us catching fish or if the conditions are going to be the right thing. I was most worried about being able to tell the right story of this place. I really wanted them to see it the way that I see this place. What's up everybody out there? Welcome back to another episode of Addicted Life. Today, where are we? Special guests in the house. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Finally, it's been a long time coming, has it not, Marlon? It's oh, been a really, really long time. So we've had Ash on a couple of our live feeds, and almost every single time we have her on, you guys are like, more Ash, more Ash. So here we are. We're in your territory now. We're fishing with you. Yeah, we're on the Upper Peninsula. We're in some of my favorite territory in all of the Pacific Northwest. And I thought I would take some good friends up on a hike today and show them some of my favorite spots to fish and a little bit about what Olympic Peninsula fishing is. All about. Yeah, we're so excited about it. We cannot wait. Hey, you guys, I want you guys to do me a huge favor. We have a link down below to Ashley's YouTube channel. She's going to be filming a lot more and putting a lot of content on her channel. So go down here, subscribe if you guys want to see some more awesome Pacific Northwest fishing. Are we ready to catch some fish or what? I'm already, I'm already ready to go. Let's do it. I've been waiting on you. All right, let's go. <laughs> Off the bat, I can already tell I'm a little underweight. I'm just using this tiny little little lead here because the river's pretty low, it's pretty clear. So you kind of want to try to be uninvasive. You don't want to get any big presentations, probably a little bit longer leaders, you know, smaller, smaller weights, stuff that's not gonna be so visible to those fish as it goes through there in that strike zone. Because the common rule of thumb, if you can see them, they can see you. And I'm pretty sure I can see them. So it's kind of, you know, it was a semi slow start. We started lower in the river and our, the idea was to just work our way slowly up and hit as many holes as we could before dark, getting such a late start like we did. And we got into one spot in particular and I think everybody fishing could tell that this hole was gonna hold fish at a big piece, you know, a big log across it, good structure, two currents coming together. And Marlin saw fish as soon as we walked up, but it was in the, the perfect kind of a spot that a steelhead would be where you couldn't get a presentation to it. I could just barely see his red. Yeah, he's, he's like literally right there. I just try to like... I think I scooped him off somehow. 
And he casted one time and it moved, out, it left, it just moved away, went to the other side of the river and we didn't see it again. And as I uh, took a few steps down and started to get my spinner up behind these logs, I literally said to Marlon, I go, there is just no way there's not a fish in that little eddy. There's no way there's not a fish over in that little eddy. Got him, got him. Everything you could imagine from a spinner fish just absolutely hit it like a freight train, and then the fight was on. Nope, 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 nope. He's chasing, dude. Oh, where do we go? I almost want to cross. Land him right here. Okay. I don't think you can cross. Do you feel like you can crawl up on this? Yeah, I can get up there. <laughs> he keeps Moby dicking me down there, throwing his tail out of the water. Oh my god, dude! It's a big fish, I saw him in the blue. I don't know, man. I'm just gonna go across. Yeah, you can cross in there. Yep. Sean, just cross in there. Look at that, dude. Oh my god. It's oh my god, dude. That's bigger than the fish I got last time. I'm freaked out here. Okay, ready? <laughs> nope, not ready. Get, him in, get his head up. I'm like definitely out. maxing out. Real close. Oh my god. Okay. Ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What a chunk! Hey, that's a nice thank fish, you. Man. That's a nice fish. Wow! Just crushed old Blue Faithful. Thirty-six and a half, probably. Wow. Maybe thirty-seven if he's lucky. <laughs> he's right where I guess. Probably eighteen. I think yeah, you're probably exactly right. Seventeen inch girth. Very long. Still though. a giant. Very long fish. Yeah. Wow, you guys, that was epic. That's they didn't a giant. know what to do. That's a good They're fish. just running around, just going with the flow. I thought for sure he was going to go between those trees and we were done for. Look at the colors, like this double stripe. He's starting, unreal. Blushing cheeks. Look at this fish, everybody. Just a true OP giant. It's not as big as they get, but heck, how can you complain? This is a quality <laughs> fish, man. Look at that quality face. fish. Wow, guys, that was so awesome. Worth all the hours, all the driving. <laughs> nice they're putting us on him. Oh, that was good stuff. I was so scared it was gonna come off the whole time. That down, that straight down river, pulling straight up on him like that yeah. never works. But that mustad hook held on to him. Phew. Very good. We actually came into this hole and we could, we thought we could see some fish hanging out with the tail out. So Jordan started fishing it. Marlin went up ahead of him, uh, upriver and fished it. Oh, we you see him move sideways for it? Swipe at you? No, he's getting he's getting nervous now. He's getting out of here. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to run a drift fishing setup through it. It's the technique that I'm the most comfortable and confident with because that's how I started fishing. That's what I learned to fish on. And I knew that because of how fast this piece of water was moving under the logs, that if I could get something underneath that area, that I could probably tease a fish out. I guess it's the opposite of low holing. I upper hold them and pulled 
and pulled a fish out. And it was definitely one of my favorite moments of the day. Nice fish. Jeez, there was another giant just right here on the bank. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Take off. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Me too, bye. They look so much bigger when you get them closer. Right? You know, like looking out of the top there, they don't seem like they're giant, but then you get them in within view and they just look amazing. Alright, I'm gonna bring him down to you. Okay. Easy. This guy has lived some life. Look at him. He's Gorgeous. just kicking butt and taking names for a living. Look, that is such a unique color. Oh, thank you, oh, little. Kisses. Thank you. Get out of here. Those are good kisses. Okay, Go. come on. Come on. Wow, look at that cheek. So I think the coolest part of this episode and this trip in general, as always, I think with any style of fishing or any fishing trip is the friends you make along the way and the the kind of connection that you make with the people that you fish with. And I think a, a good example of that, especially in this situation is Ashley. Uh, you know, it's really hard to find dedicated and driven one business owners and two, just fishermen in general. This area that we're in has a few different females that guide up here, but it's just a male dominated sport. And it's, it's so neat to see that that love for fishing and that drive for fishing creates progression and it makes you a better fisherman. But to get to fish next to Ashley and watch her clean up after Marlin with that little Yarny drift rig that she had, uh, it just, you know, it opens your eyes and opens everybody's eyes in the world to how, how fun fishing can be for both sexes, male or female. Uh, anybody that wants to get out there and if you're driven enough and you love the outdoors, it's, it's a sport that never quits giving. Still hot. Well, for a late start, it has been eventful to say the least. Ashley just landed an absolute beautiful buck. It's kind of a buck show today so far. I got the giant one on the spinner. Next goal is to get Marlin one before the day's over, but we still got some really good water left. It's a picture perfect coastal day, man. I can't, I can probably count on a couple of hands how many times I've got to fish on a bluebird crystal clear day and catch beautiful fish like this. So already, if we haven't already said a huge thanks to Ashley for having us out here on on some absolutely sacred ground. So I'm gonna keep fishing. Let's find us another one. I just asked Ash, I'm like, did the fish suck into those logs right there and first cast in those logs he took it? I'm ready whenever you are. It's <laughs> over. A nice one. Falling out of the net here. First cast, the red pearl. She ate it. That's a snow belly. Yeah. That is such a bright fish. That is a cromer. Not out of the ocean long, that's for sure. What a beauty. Let's not play with her too long. Let's just let her go do her thing. You're out. Sweet. Nice work. Yeah, I'm starting to feel out done there for a second. <laughs> not for too long though. I even asked Matt, he, I was like, I'm gonna put on my specialty. He's like, what's that? I'm like, worms. Worms. <laughs> All right, so we decided to make a big move. We only got about 20 minutes of daylight still. We're gonna haul ass back to the truck, jump in, head down river, see if we can't get one more big tug on the line here. Fish right here, yet. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't walk very much further. Yes, sir. Yes. That's a. Oh no! No! 
He's like literally dragging that with him. Oh my god. It's Maybe give it a bunch of line really quick. I think I got it. If I can get stuck on. I don't know, hold on. It's wrapped around it. You think I have a split or walk up above it. Yeah, it's like wrapped perfectly around it. Come on, if you're gonna roll you off. Still on there, come yeah, on, it buddy. Is too. It's stuck on a jig or something. You can see yeah, it it's now. stuck on another piece of line. Is what it is. Oh, no. Let him, let him take that. Oh. oh, I was pushing my luck trying to get it to break. <laughs> Salvage my float though. Well, everybody, the witching hour is upon us. Got the third cast through here. Matt set us up on the hole, told us right where to cast. Third cast through, I kept going a little deeper each time. Sunk a Rooney. Little, enough, please. Goodness me. Look at this thing, everybody. Oh. Everything a, a guy could ask for. Look at it. and strong to boot. Look at that, everybody. What a specimen. Sink it series sticking out of her nose. First hen of the day, too. She's got a good personality. Look at that fish. Look at that. Oh my God, I'm in love. All right, well, we're gonna let this pretty girl go. She's ready to go, she's got spunk. What a way to end, an amazing day. Just in time for the witching hour. Bob Rudowski. Two, the plan was to come out and see some really incredible territory. We could have gone for numbers, but instead we decided to go for experience. So we went for a couple mile hike way up into the river so that we could see some canyons and some cool areas. Going in, I knew that because we weren't going to get any rain and it's going to get a little bit colder, that the rivers are going to drop a little bit. Things could potentially clear up a lot and make fishing a little bit more difficult. Well, had a casualty on the walk up, and uh, now I have a two, I have a four piece X rod now. So we came, well, we're about three miles up here, and uh, there's no way I'm not fishing a spinner, so we're just gonna do it redneck style here. Take my Gerber scissors right to my X rod, and just like that, maybe bend that eye up a little bit. Oh, we're dialed. I even got some electrical tape. I might. My electrical tape that and we got the brand new eight foot X series just like that available soon at Walmart. So as I was meandering on upriver away from everybody I kind of made my way up to the top of this run and and it was just kind of walking and scouting, it was just looking across the river trying to see if I could see any fish in there. And I saw this little pocket that I couldn't see the bottom in, so I couldn't help myself. I actually dropped my bobber stop down quite a bit. I was only fishing about three and a half, four feet. Flipped it in and the bobber went about 10, 15 feet down the river and just absolutely drained. I 
I didn't even know he had walked away and I turned around and I see a fish splashing everywhere. I thought it was really hilarious that he had snuck up there on his own and made sure to give himself and only himself a chance at a, the first couple casts into the area and it clearly paid off. Short. Wow, everybody. Walked up here. We're having trouble getting a good drift in this room, this hole below. First cast, as you guys saw, that bobber barely made it into the river. He just said, look at that, that speck on that fish's cheek. Incredible. And look at that sink it. You guys, look at that. All the way in his mouth. I really let him eat it. I was kind of, it looked like there would be a fish there, but I really wasn't sure. This guy's still got a lot of energy. And he broke. Woo! What a rodeo, you guys. So, that was unfortunate. But as I hooked that fish, as you guys saw, got him to the bank so quick as he was rolling, I didn't want to get him down in these trees. So he had a ton of spunk when I got him to the bank, and instead of sitting here, let him bang around on the rocks, easier just to let him go. But that was awesome. Glass is all fogged up. That fish didn't go 20. That was killer though. First little drift right through this little log jam. Great way to start the morning. Okay, you guys have seen this in our videos before. We have this primo hole right here that looks really, really good. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna draw sticks for first cast. And we're gonna go for a little cast for cast challenge right here and see who gets to fish first and see who catches a fish first. And it could be none of us. We don't even know if there's a fish in here, but it sure looks really good. So let's, let's see what happens here. Okay, Jordan, pick your poison. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that happened last time we did this too. Right. <laughs> Medium stick. So I go first. First second. I get first cast. Now this is the hard part is you, when you do these challenges like this, it's hard to know like what to fish when you're first go through. So just the way these fish have been, as aggressive as they've been, I'm just gonna roll right through with a worm and if it pays off, it pays off. If it doesn't, these guys are gonna have a chance. This is what's gonna, gonna happen. The bobber is gonna go out there. It's gonna go about 10 feet. It's gonna hit the bottom. See, Marlon's gonna set the hook so hard it's gonna end up in the trees. Let me give you a little bit of strategy here too. Mm -hmm. Last time we saw some mistakes in these challenges where these guys tried to like start at the top of the hole and shit. I ain't doing that. I'm going right to the best part of the hole. And I'm gonna Ooh, make my cast. I don't know cast. if I would do that. I I'm think doing I might it. Do something else. I'm you gonna wanna, make. You want a second? You want to think about that nope. a little bit? Nope. Uh, going right to the good part. Oh boy, gosh, I've been here before. I don't know if I do that. <laughs> oh, you spooked him. I don't know why. See, now they're trying to, they're trying to psych me out. Oh no, and I pulled it out. There's my cast. Damn it. And Marlon goes through first, definitely had a bobber down. Totally whiffed it. I think he was, if we can go back and look at the footage, I think you guys would all agree he was way too early on his hook set. There's my cast. Damn it, that was a good, that looked good too, I thought. Oh, here we go. Look at your tail. <laughs> There's teeth marks on it, folks. And it just barely missed him, dude. Now Ash, let's see if Ash is gonna get one. She's going, she's chose drift fishing. We'll see what, we'll see if that pays off for her or not. One of the most fun parts about the day was the challenge that we had set up. I was pretty sure I was going to rope one in immediately, knowing that area and knowing that those fish really love prawns. I truly believe that uh, we're screwed and Jordan is going to win this now. <laughs> Whoa, lack of faith Whoa, much? I'm trying to push you right now. <laughs> there he is, there he is! I did not catch any speed in that drift at all. All right, I'm out of it. Uh, oh, oh. no! Was that a- <laughs> 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 
No, it wasn't. It was like a trout or something. It was no. a half pounder. No, it was not. It was just like a big shiny part On of it. The real end. Oh my God. I looked away, looked back, and there that fish was chasing. I felt a little nibble, and I just couldn't make it connect. And that was a frustrating piece about it, but it was cool to know that, you know, a fish at least was in there. I just couldn't, you know, sting it and make it happen in that moment, but it was really fun having a challenge anyways. <laughs> there he is, got him, got him, oh my God. Oh, that was a big fish. What do you know, my bobber drains, I thought I was snagged, I lift up lift up tight and see just this behemoth of a fish roll under the surface. And what do you know, he pops off. You saw him, right? I never saw it. <laughs> oh. Right there? Yes, exactly. He'll bite, he'll bite. No one stung him. I just whipped no his head out the bottom. Him. I don't think he really ran. Oh. 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 So we made the big decision to run down river, try to get down as far as we could, closer to the trucks, and then maybe find a different area to fish that afternoon. The rain had just started, it just started to change a little bit. The river was probably starting to rise and gain a little color. And we get down to where we'd had some success the day before, and as soon as we walk up, these fish were sitting along this log jam the whole time. And I saw, I could see the fish. You could see pretty much through the whole river. Most every hole you could see the, the bottom and you could see the fish. There's one outside the log. Poor shizzle. I'm going for it. I saw him go for it. Epic. Dude, where's that net? First, we saw that fish. I said, there's one just outside the log. Marlon made it up. I thought he was going in the trees. Perfect oh cast. Get out of there. They hit the wood. Run up, maybe. I didn't realize she was all the way in that. I'm gonna lose another one to a damn tree. Yeah, it's done. Damn it, how did that happen? I didn't realize she was all the way in that or I would've put more pressure that on her. She's traveling so far each time. But that was so cool how that went down. Dang it. the day coming to some of my more traditional spots and checking to see if there was anything going on. There wasn't as much, but we still got to see a lot of territory, see some really beautiful fish, had opportunities at other, and most importantly, we had a great time together. So I say day two, success. I must say this is probably one of the best steelhead trips I've been on in a long time. Um, you know, everything, it was so casual, it was so happy, everything, it was just peaceful out there from walking up and down the riverbank to being in a, a rainforest and in these areas that seem so wild, you know what I mean? To, to the normal person, you know, that lives in town or, or even out in the country, you just don't get to experience the setting in the moment that you get to in a place like this. And to get to come out again and on a new trip and make new friends in new places and get to experience something and see it through their eyes, it almost makes the trip more about who you fish with rather than where you fish or what you fish for. Um, so again, huge thank you to Ashley and Matt for, for having us along and being such great hosts out here. You know, it's a, it's a trip that's going to set well and it's going to and it's going to be back in the back of my mind for a long time, and it's going to have me trying to replicate a day like that for the rest of my life because it just all went so well. Like we said before, if you guys want to learn more and come out and fish with Ashley and you want to check out more of Bad Ash's adventures, go down here and check out the link for her YouTube channel or just look her up, badashfishing.com. Uh, it's a great adventure up here. She's an incredible guide and just a great person to, to be with and, and ex experience some of the history and the culture uh, and then get to just an, experience some absolutely world-class fishing like you saw here today. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some more of our trips like this where we come out to different parts of the country and fish with these awesome people that we get to in these videos just like this one right here if you haven't already go down here hit subscribe hit the thumbs up and drop a comment below with what you thought of today's video and you could be the comment of the day just like this person right here thank you so much for tuning in today you guys you stay fishy and we'll see you out there